Hello and welcome to another episode of LaunchCast. These are very exciting times in our company. You know, the team and the client roster are just expanding. Uh, so we're very excited today to bring to this table uh, another great uh, member of our leadership team. So today we're going to talk with Mr. Ian Woodley, our Chief Operating Officer. And um, before I get back to him, I get to him. I must say that he is a, is a career operations professional. He's a part-time business advisor and coach, amongst other things. And he is a full-time Indian food lover. So welcome to LaunchCast, Ian. What an introduction. <laughs> great, it's great to be here, thanks. <laughs> you know what? Let's just address the elephant in the room. Indian food? Why? Where does it come from? It's a, it, in Britain, Indian food is the national dish now. When I was growing up, food was very bland. It was the fish and chips, sausage and mash and... And then we're introduced to some really extreme flavors at the time. Um, and I think it's taken, you know, certainly in the UK, it's taken by storm. Yeah. And so it be, just became a national favorite. And I think all of us just love it, you know. And uh, for me personally, I'm, I, I love the depth of the flavors and the, and the variety. Yeah. yeah, you seem to be an aficionado about that. What about Calgary? Do, do we have good eating food? It's good getting food here. Yeah. Getting there? It's getting there. Yeah, I mean, when I first came here in 2006, um, it was very sparse, you know, right. to get to get a decent uh, Indian meal. Um, but now there's some really good restaurants out there, oh. which is really good. Okay, so cutting to cutting to the chase. See, I'm getting better. My idiomatic expressions. Talking about investment banking operation. Okay, it's very different from retail banking that most of us are um, exposed to, right? So the scale. Uh, the business model, um, yeah, walk us through around that. The differences? The differences between investment banking operations and retail banking. The difference fundamentally is when you look at the, 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 the types of retail is geared towards the consumer, general public, yeah. and small business, I, I'll throw that in as well. Investment banking, the world that I was in, was geared towards governments, sovereign funds, institutions, it's bank to bank. So everything is that much bigger. Everything has, financially, has that much more value. In transaction sizes can be in the, in the billions. Yeah. Um, and they can be commitments for 10, 20 years. You know? So the, these, are, these are the investment banking is where the governments and major institutions, big companies, Apple and Google, they go to finance their business or finance their country. Um, and so, there's an immediacy to what happens in that space. And what I mean by that is the transactions are happening by the millions in nanoseconds. So the difference being between a retail transaction, if I went into a bank and looked for a loan, for, you know, for a vehicle or, or whatever, chances are I'll, it'll take a week, you up to uh, these days, it used to be a lot longer. Sometimes they can try and turn it around in a lot quicker now, but generally, a, three, five days. Whereas in investment banking, transactions are happening every nanosecond. Mm -hmm. If there's a mistake, got it. that mistake can cost millions and millions of dollars. And so everything has to be as efficient and as controlled as possible. Yeah. Because it really does mean, you know, the, the, the cost of getting it wrong is substantial and you can get it wrong in a second, literally. Absolutely. Um, so that's that's the kind of main differences and to support that the technologies are different the technologies are 
this huge investment in, 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 in investment banking and technology. And up until probably the last sort of five, six maybe years, um, where a lot of the fintechs have started up and a lot of the technology small startups have started you know, building into that space. Um, the banks are really progressive and probably the progressive industry in technology. Yeah, They yeah. had the money to throw at it and they had the need, you know, to become, you know, apart from the control of the transactions, is the competitiveness of the big global banks. You know, yeah. one, a cent, a fraction of a cent on the dollar that they can save in efficiency through technology translates into millions of dollars a month in Absolutely. revenue. Absolutely. Because we're talking about billions of transactions happening daily yeah um yeah in that case so it's interesting because that's exactly the connection that's why the question yeah um it, it seemed out of nowhere right but um uh so you as far as i understood you have experience in both uh, uh banking spaces it, either retail or investment right Ma mainly mainly, in, mainly investment? In investment and uh and financial and financial services in general less than the retail and i'm i'm, I'm i clarify retail yeah as in the branch the branch, yeah, yeah, I, I, sure. I, yeah, I, I, I've been more kind of headquarters, uh, financial services yeah. and investment, more corporate, more than, corporate than specifically a, a branch. Yeah. So let's tie that to technology because I think that's that's something interesting to explore because now you're a CEO of a technology company, mm. right? So how is that? Because you've been around and banking for for good years, so. Of course, you saw a lot of technology like changing things. Mm. Great example about the difference between investment and retail. Uh, not only the speed, yeah. not only the real reliability, mm. but efficiency, you know, all of that. Um, how was your relationship with technology in the earlier uh, banking days where you started? Back then, I don't want to put a year on it, mm. but back then, Technology was secondary, really. In, in, in reality, most of the functions that were performed were performed manually. Um, so huge workforces, you know, um, that there was, I remember going back probably in the, in the mid nineties and probably early nineties. And then beyond that, every five years, the industry would, would make a statement that in the next five years, we're gonna be fully automated. And it hasn't happened. Yeah. It hasn't happened. The, the exponential growth in technology and the abilities within technology, you know, they, it's there, the capabilities there. Um, but then it becomes an issue of priority and, you know, competitiveness. Of course. But back then, um, technology was basic. It was basic, you know. Um, it was used to perform the minor functions, you know, um, calculations, basically. Everything was run on a batch system. Um, um, servers, um, if, I don't know if you, if you, if you have heard of these in, in an archive somewhere, but AS400 servers, which were the AS400 servers, AS400, yeah. which were basically, they were the, the staple of, of the back end of technology yeah. back in the day, yeah. but you'd run an overnight batch. And so lots of inputs into this batch would then be sent and be triggered in an overnight period. Um, and people would be working over it. The, the whole night shift was a big thing. Is this still a big Absolutely. thing for banks nowadays? That's in terms of having people working night shifts. Oh, oh yeah. Almost yeah, yeah, nowadays yeah. we have that. Yeah, well, I, yeah. But with different functions, how, how, how is that? Because we have so much technology now. It's different functions, but, but whereas the roles have changed. So the overnight role of a data center would have been to, you know, load the tapes. It used to be on magnetic tape, right? They used to run those batches on magnetic tape. And you'd have to have someone to load them, someone to take them off, reload, press buttons to print. It wasn't the scheduling that you get today, you know, in, in, in I mean, we, we're just used to it now. But then there wasn't. There literally had to be someone to press that button at 10.30 at night to, yeah, to kick the whole thing off and then to finish it and to check it. So I think, the you know, whereas that was that kind of actionable functions, people had their role within data centers. Now it's much more monitoring and control and support in case something doesn't go as it should do. Of course. And the element that's 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 added to that and the necessity for that is because the world is, be, you know, the te well, technology within that industry and just generally has become global. So everything's integrated globally now. 
So, you know, in the past you'd have your silos, you know, you'd have your new office in New York, office in Calgary, office in Toronto, yes. and each one would have a data center they'd run independently, run their, their, their particular jobs on for their clients locally. And then you put all those together and you have one data center now doing that for the three centers. Now, ex now expand that out across. How would you send centers. them? Because, because again, you're consolidating that information. It's fascinating. It's just like we have, sorry, just a small side note. We have the banking system, you know, it's a ancient yeah. system. Yeah. Right. And then it's interesting because you are, you were over there in an era that technology was kind of uh, growing. Mm. So the way you describe it's still a lot of like uh, different pods. So, okay. So a branch would have the whole information that happened on that day, all the transactions and everything. How they would communicate with another branch to make sure they consolidate that, that information? Branches or we're talking about corporate, got right, it. Not, not retail. Oh, okay, on, got on it. On the corporate level, but it's the same thing. But it's the same, same, it's the same logic. Same thing. Okay. You have local senders that collect data. And in the past, they didn't talk. Mm. And then there's the revolutionary FTP, you know, the... The, the FTP, and, file transfer protocol. Right. Yeah. And suddenly we realized that we could connect one hub to another. And if we could connect one hub to another, we could connect 50 hubs to a central hub. Got it. And that in itself, apart from the efficiencies of keep, of, of first of all, of put it, having one source of truth, it meant reconciliation and alignment was a lot easier with everything in one place. Of course. It gave us the efficiencies um, that we needed, but it also became, okay, what next? Get it, what yeah. next? If Most we can do this, what next? Of course, yeah. Um, and in some ways, you know, technology companies hated the banks because the banks were dictating to the technology companies, this is how we're going to do it. So you imagine back then, company A, technology vendor, provider. I'm the client as bank, and I've, I've got five of your applications or five of your computer systems, let's not call them apps, call computer systems in five of your centers. Then I decide that I only want one center. I only want one of your systems now, I don't want five. So the, the, the industry cons consolidated. Okay. Um, so it, it just became much more uh, controlled and much more efficient at that point. Um, but also much more competitive. Because once you let the cat out of the bag that you can do this, everybody's racing to get it done quicker so yeah. they can save that fraction of a cent on each dollar. Right? Exactly. It's crazy, man. So you actually have been involved with technology for years and years. It's just yes. on a different side, uh, different uh, for sure industry, right? Um, I, 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 yeah, I've, I've, sat on, I've sat on all sides of technology, uh, okay. although from an operations, you know, I've designed the systems from an operation function. I've had, I've run development teams and production support teams within the big banks as part of my operational responsibilities. But I've also designed and delivered technology. I haven't built it, I'm not a technologist, yeah. but for clients. So the products to the clients. So I've been involved in technology really all the way along. It's been a key part of what I've done. Besides music, because I know music is a, oh, yeah. is a shared passion amongst yeah. both of us. Yeah. Is technology another passion of yours in general? It, 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 it is. And I think not for the, you know, I'm, I'm not the guy that would sit and code. You know, I, don't, I quite honestly don't have a passion for that. What I have a passion for is the possibilities. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, as you say, you're, you're, you're a musician and we mentioned the food. There's a side of us all that's creative and we express it in different ways. And I see that creativity coming through technology. The, the, there's so much potential and each day that goes past, the new enhancements, the new capabilities yeah. of technology and the new breakthroughs lead us to uh, new, new places in industry and in our lives that we never dreamt of a year ago. Absolutely. That's, that's where the passion and That's comes. what is fascinating. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever works now, it can be improve through technology also it can be right it can be I, I think there's the other element though there's the the other side of that is the to recognize that technology isn't always the solution it's part of the solution and so we have to adapt to a certain degree the way we approach certain things um, and not expect technology to solve everything 
it's a it's a it's a critical part of the solution but yeah. we also have to adapt and be able to use it and understand why we're using you it. got it yeah and that and that's a whole other level so the way you're saying what i'm, what I'm getting from you is technology is forcing us to revisit and rethink the ways we were doing things traditionally yeah yeah right and i i think that's you know just sort of jumping and from the question really into launch code it's it's for us a lot of our value is having that understanding that when a client comes to us and asks us can, can we do this that's the technology Absolutely, yeah. our responsibility is why why do you, what what value does it create for you and how how is it going to be used to help the clients understand how that technology fits and it's not necessarily the only solution there may be other considerations and that's where we 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 use our expertise as well yeah and that's our realm right at yeah. launch code that's where we that's our expertise it's yeah. it's the business and expertise we have across the board you know mm. ex an experienced leadership team for sure uh, but also you know a very smart and creative and experienced like a uh, operations team or the uh, product um, the product team for sure, yeah. right? Designers and developers. In a way that all of our clients, it's exactly like that. We the conversation is not about the solution. The conversation is about their needs, yeah. what is happening, how things work. And out of there for sure, we're gonna be able to um create something that is unique. Yeah. It's tailored, uh it's tailored for them. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's interesting because um I was talking to Ali on the previous podcast. Yeah. Uh, and then and that, uh, at least the, 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 the leadership team, the five of us, we're all passionate about technology yeah. and different ways, just yeah. different aspects. Yeah. But the five of us, right, different uh, kind of uh, age ranges and everything, but different experiences, yeah. actually, right? Yeah. Uh, but all of us, like, fascinated about technology and how technology can actually change business. But at the end of the day, also change people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Changes the way we do things. Change the way we do things Literally. as human beings. Literally. At the end of the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. As human beings, yeah. Um, lovely. Okay, so moving to the side of the Atlantic, right? Because coming back a little bit to you, mm. uh, the word that changed a lot <laughs> between football and soccer, right? <laughs> and so, how is that for you? How was that change? Between football and soccer, or just in general? <laughs> in general. Just in general. I'm using football and soccer as an analogy. Well, Okay, so you know when 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 we first arrived, you know, there's, I think there's a there's a kind of expectation uh, on both sides that because we speak the same language, that there's a, a you know we're, we're very much aligned, very similar, and it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Culturally, you know, Canada and North America and Europe are very different, yeah. um, and including the terminology, you know, yeah. shopping trolleys shopping carts shopping carts something yeah, exactly. simple where i kind of got into trouble when i first arrived was telling my kids in front of the neighbors make sure that you play on the pavement which i found out pavement in canada is road it is road yes in the uk it's the sidewalk wow so by telling your kids to play make sure you play on the pavement <laughs> you're telling them to play in the middle of the road right so it's little things like that that can uh, that can, can throw you a bit, but there there are differences. But they, you know, it's um, I think the thing I love about Canada is the diverse diverseness of it, and the fact that that you know you jump straight in, embrace it, um, become part of it, and we've got you know so many different cultures, so many different people from different different backgrounds that it works really well. If, if you know, I found that, that I had just as a sidebar, I had a, a I met um, another Brit that came over around about the same time as us, who really was so, for whatever reason, they came to Canada, but they really wanted to have a little Britain in Canada. Okay. Um, and quite honestly, you're going to struggle in any country if you try and force. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Um, to me and my family, you know, as soon as we set foot here, we, we kind of lost. Okay, we're not British anymore. We're Canadian. Let's 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 assimilate. Let's get into the into the fabric. Let's let's become part of this. Um, so yeah, there are differences, 
you know, no. but but the great news is, as as we discussed, you know, that the Indian restaurants are, are getting <laughs> getting more frequent and and better. That's that's so very important for you. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's that's it. Apart from that, yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of differences, but uh, for sure there are way more similarities uh, than differences. Right at the end of the day, I think values so, right? on the whole. The I mean, values, the, right? yeah, the, 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 the culture is different. You know, the way the British see things, their worldview is different um, on the whole. Uh -huh. um, and generally speaking, um, but the values, I think, are the thing that stay true. That's amazing. You know? Yeah. Um, that's, so yeah, that's what connects us at the end of the day, right? So, yeah. Um, okay, so it is clear for myself, at least in this conversation, because I know you already a little bit, and of course, I, I hope that for you know uh, the folks that are watching now, that um, you, although you came from the banking system, technology was always like the blood in the veins somehow. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it was not about technology. It was about how technology can streamline, can change yeah. um, uh, something. Which leads leads me to, to Launch Code, right? To what we do here. What what attracted your attention to Launch Code? And why us? A combination of things. I think I saw a company that is has enormous potential and is at that stage of evolution mm -hmm. where some of the disciplines that I've learned over the number of years that I've been involved in operations control and etc those disciplines it would really help now mm -hmm. in structuring this organization to really scale as we know we're the, the, you know the clients that we we have uh, already in the clients that have shown expression in, 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 in interest in what we do are getting bigger and bigger. Of course, we still we still look after um, the smaller clients and smaller and smaller um, developments. But, you know, as we as we grow, um, we need to make sure that we grow in the easiest way possible, in the most efficient way possible, delivering the quality while we do that. Yeah. And it's something I've done for many years within the banking operations. and. You know, as, a, as, as you know, um, Andre, you know, I, I ran global banking, yes. global operations. And, and part of that was scaling, knowing when to dial up, knowing when to dial down. Um, and we're in that kind of space now. So that's the challenge of that uh, and the excitement of that uh, at this, this time in, in, in launch code is compelling to me. Um, but that in itself wouldn't be enough for me to come. Um, and the people make a big difference and having met and i met you i think before i joined yeah uh, exactly. i met the leadership team but i met others um from that moment of meeting the leadership team uh within within uh, launch code and seeing what they were passionate about their values why they got up in the morning and did what they did um and understanding that everything that I heard was about the customer, mm -hmm. was about delivering the best for the customer. Yeah. I didn't hear anything about, Absolutely. we want to grow this and, and do X, Y, Z. It was all about how do we service the customer, including the growth plans? How do we support bigger customers? How do we you know, help them? Um, and that was a big, a big uh, for me, that was a big, um, big part of it. I'm glad to say when I did join, you know, and got to know the developers, the designers, and the whole team. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a, a group, of, a very unique group of like-minded individuals. Um, and I've still yet to find, uh, and I, you know, not that I'm looking, but I'm still yet to find someone with an ego outside <laughs> yeah. of that. Right? It's, yeah. it's, so it's very much collaborative. It's very much a team, and that team extends to the clients that we engage with. Yeah, it's a collaborative approach. Um, so I think that's really the reason. It's the it's the it's a great point, great time to join an organisation launch code. You know, it's not a startup. It's uh, it's got some uh, it's had a fantastic history and it's got a fantastic future, and it's building that future out now um, operationally so that we can deliver to the customers. You know, the quality that we want to deliver and they deserve. Absolutely. It, 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 uh, Thank you <laughs> for sharing that <laughs> in that level. It makes uh, my life and my team's life, you know, marketing and branding so much easier, right? Because at the end of the day, um, when we're talking about us, right? 
uh, as part of what we have to do. It is easy because we're talking about something that is very real, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. no makeup, facelift. No. This is exactly how it is. Um, the kind of relationships it nurture here, mm. um, the values and the culture that our company holds, yeah. you know, very close to the heart. Yeah. So yeah, well, thanks, thanks for that. And by the way, um, uh, for Mickey, we gotta use that piece somewhere in, a, in advertising. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're gonna put you to sell that everywhere. It's an idea. Oh, the, the poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like a piece. <laughs> exactly. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh so 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 let me go for my from last question to you and and by the way for you folks at home we are gonna have opportunity to also kind of um have you know a, a little bit more intense and deep discussions about um, our you know team members and employees focusing about their story and what what can we learn from them um today just a little bit but for sure we're gonna have an opportunity for that uh but i want to finish talking about the future here mm. okay and it can be a very loaded question so take your time and then let's let's talk about that you and i okay so what do we know we know is what do we know now is that alberta is really working very hard and things are happening to become the tech hub of the the west mm. i put this way mm. it's the best way to explain competing with you know a lot of other places that are trying to be canada's west tech yeah. hub yeah um and here we are, Launch School's headquarters. We do have operations in Brazil. We do have operations uh, uh, in, in Orlando. We do have operations in other places in the world, yeah. for sure. Uh, but we are here. That's the headquarters of Launch School. This is the heart of Launch School, where things kind of start, mm. I would say. So what is your perspective around uh, now not only launch gold kind of position in this market that's for sure we talked a little bit about that the way we do things but also share a little bit how do you see that market how do you see what is happening here over the next five ten years okay probably let me start with what's happening in calgary as far as i see it okay um economically calgary is gonna have a stronger next two years, 24 months, from a, a GDP perspective, than probably any other major centre or centre within Canada. Um, I think, there's a, that, so on the back of that, the fact there's a great standard of living here, the fact that the housing is cheaper or reasonably priced compared with the rest of Canada, so, yeah. those in themselves are a big draw. Now couple that with, you know, um, the true Calgarian grit, which is, you know, something I was taken back with when I first arrived in Calgary. I think back then, 85% of people were involved as, as, as small businesses or entrepreneurs. There was only, there weren't that many in, in the big corporates. It was predominantly entrepreneurs who had started businesses between five and 10 people. That's, that's, that's the kind of space we're in. Now you, you inject finance into that economic you inject you know or put in a, a government that wants to support and build the tech space a willingness of people that want to come and live here because it's a better quality of life you know i see that that growth continuing and we can see that with you know a number of companies that absolutely are really yeah, as we were discussing before in, exactly emphasis uh, yeah you know aws and uh, to name just a couple um so I, th I think it's a strong argument it's a it's a it's you know every place has their time and now the the you know you don't have to be in the office so much um where those tech jobs were originally centered in toronto for, for at least all vancouver for, for for canada now i can come live in calgary uh enjoy the benefits of the economy enjoy the benefits of, of the cheaper housing yeah. um, and bring my skill set to calgary and it's not just the workers. Now you bring the workers, the companies will see the resource pool and they would be more willing to locate as well, which we're seeing. So I think it, one kind of follows the other. You know, the, the major drawback in, in Calgary over the previous years is, is the resource pool. You know, if you're a major company, where do you get the resources from? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that remote working was an option before. So it's chicken and egg. AWS decide it's worth you know, putting a, a, a hub in, in Calgary. 
but now they could go around the world and get the resources. But now they go over so here, you see the migration from tech skills out of Ontario to here because AWS are here. Exactly. So it's chicken egg, and I, I see that continuing. I think I think we'll we'll see some more of them. Um, where I think launch code are positioned yeah. is you know within that we're, we're in a prime situation here. You know we're at the cusp of of, of of some major growth, and we're working through that. Hence, you know the expansion of the management team and and, yeah. and, and, and the strategies that we're, we're, we're looking at. Um, we just want to be careful that we can, you know, we, 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 we build it in a way that we can deliver consistently um, the quality that we always have and, and, we, and, and our clients have enjoyed. Um, I don't see outside of that, given what I know of the, the team here and given what I know of what we do and how we do it, I don't see where our competition is here in this space. No. I think it's ours to lose. And I think for us, it's, you know, the scaling will give us more breadth and give us even more market dominance. Amazing. Wow. So I think the next three to five years look really, really promising. They do. They do. And it's great to hear from your perspective also. It adds a lot to the table. Look, thank you so much. It was a great conversation. I hope you. you appreciate it also. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, it's great. So, great. So thank the you. Were, um, yeah, we, as, as we were discussing before, I think it's important for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, employees, and of course, our uh, subscribers, the people that are watching our videos, uh, to kind of you know, hear from every single leader should remember, right? What is the vision? What do you have in mind? How do you see the future? So thank you so much. Much, much appreciated. The, the, and and I, what I would say to that, you know, and I don't, I don't know if it's something that we can do, but I think these podcasts are great, you know, uh, and it's great for, for people to, to be able to see the management team and others, you know, but if there are subscribers with questions, mm -hmm. if they want to fire them directly to us, I'm certainly more than happy to answer. That is, that is an interesting take. So yeah, so maybe something for us to plan around that is maybe a live session with the leadership team. And that's a, we have a team for sure. We're going to have questions from the team and then, uh, yeah, there's something really just like so live questions, live questions, even yeah. better. Just put us on the spot or, or even, even post the podcast questions coming in directly related to Absolutely. you know the point yeah so so there you Absolutely. go so if you do have any you know questions or comments sometimes you can call you know just send some comments over there yeah please feel free to do it ian's going to be more than happy to answer answer um himself so this was another episode of launchcast thank you so much for staying with us i found it fascinating once again uh this conversation please follow launch code uh, all of our social channels we're having a link again we don't have an instagram platform by the way my team um has it uh, at least my contact managers and now uh, has a plan to uh, also optimize content for that platform specifically you can find us on, on all of them we're here on youtube but we just started the channel so make sure you subscribe and you just ring that bell and the reason is because every time we have a new episode which usually occurs bi-weekly gonna have that small notifications and you can watch quickly uh, for that so i cannot uh, forget that it is important that you sign our newsletter we have an amazing newsletter called launch polls we're having great response for uh from you know our audience uh you can do that on linkedin uh or you will do that eventually on our website soon uh, more to that for sure link and then you can find that so yeah thanks so much for your time and um, until the next episode of launchcast cast